Today's lesson is a view of the pyramids of Giza, including the Sphinx. I've mixed here some cerulean blue for the sky, a little bit of red maybe if you want to put a bit of pink in the sky, some raw sienna and some sepia. That's really the only four colours that we need at the moment. So let's begin, shall we? I've taped down on my piece of cardboard here some watercolour paper. It's called Bockingford and it's got a slight texture to it. So that you can see a little bit better, I'm using a 2B pencil. It's a little bit darker than the one that you might need. You could use a HB. So, let's begin then with a basic sketch. I'm going to create in this corner a little bit of detail. Perhaps it's the entrance to the pyramid are the tombs under the sand. Some blocks of stone. And some ancient brickwork. Perhaps we have a part of the Sphinx carrying across here. Leading up to the, the head. I think I'll create the features just with the suggestion of shadow. So we can have one of the eyes there, another eye here, just a suggestion maybe of the nose and a very serious mouth there. Maybe we can see a little bit of the city of Cairo, maybe in the background here, far away, maybe some buildings. Now let's try the pyramid itself. For this you could use a straight edge, you could use a ruler. I think I'm just going to go freehand. Sometimes I create a little pathway, so I'm putting a dot here and a dot here and then linking the two. That looks great. I think on the top of the pyramid there's still some of the beautiful marble or fine stonework that's left just on the very top. I think that will be enough. Now what I wanted to suggest we do now is to turn the painting upside down simply because if I turn it upside down it's easier for me to get to the edge of the pyramid and I'm going to slightly dampen 
So I'm taking some clean water and I'm going to use the flat edge of my paintbrush and just add a little bit of water to the sky area. It's in Egypt, so we've got a lovely hot, maybe it's sunset. I'm going to use some of this lovely red here. It's very diluted, this. It's not a strong red. So I'll put a little bit of red in there. Like a pinky red. Maybe the same on the other side. Pinky orangey red. And now, before the the water dries that I've put down, I'm going to swap over now to some cerulean blue. And if this is too strong, add some water. So I've simply put some water on my brush there. You can see it's already beginning to dry. Blend this with the pinky red there, and then we can finish off just with some long, long sweeps of blue. Maybe a little bit more water on my brush. So there are no clouds in this sky today. It's a beautiful Egyptian summer day. really drying quite quickly and I have to decide when to stop because I could overdo my sky. And I think that will be enough now. Let's turn it back around and have a look how our sky, oh yes. I like that. I'm going to start now down here and I'm going to introduce some of the sepia and some of the uh, raw sienna, the golden brown colours that will do for the sandstone of the pyramid and the sphinx itself. I have to be careful here, it's still wet, so I'm going to leave that for a moment or two and work work around here. So here's some some um, of the raw sienna. Maybe a touch of the sepia with it. Straight onto the dry paper. I'm going to go right over here. So I'm putting a little bit of sepia, a little bit of the raw sienna, actually blending it on the paper. We've got the distance here with the desert. I'm going to carry on with this colour now and make my way onto the pyramid itself. Trying to allow some of the sepia to be a little bit stronger and darker here and there. We will come back to this once it's dried a little bit more. My sky is still wet, so I have to be very careful here. I don't want it running into the sky at this moment. I think the top part here, we're going to have it a little bit lighter, so I've just added a little bit of water 
onto my brush. And we're having that a little bit lighter at the top. If it's not light enough, take a little bit of tissue and we can make that a lot lighter. I think I'll put some more colour on that afterwards because the sky is, is starting to run into the top of the pyramid and I don't want that. So I'm just going to let that dry for a few moments. This area here, I need to be careful. Still a little bit wet, the sky. Just using the tip of the brush here. Sometimes I like it when you get little flecks of white here and there left. I'm swapping over now to my smaller brush. This is a number three. I can introduce some colour to the face of the Sphinx. And once again, I might like to have a little bit of light down the side of the face here so I'm taking my tiny piece of tissue the edge of this piece of tissue it's going to take a little bit of color from there just to make it a little bit lighter still using the small brush I can start to pick out some shadow and shades along the base of the Sphinx. It's just a very, very fine tip of the brush. There's not a lot of paint on this. Dabbing it and gently pulling the paint across and around. So we get a little bit of feeling of the deep shadow. Just wiping my brush through the darker colour here, I put a little amount of the sepia, the dark brown here. So this is much stronger now. How fine can you be with this brush? Imagine it's a very fine pencil. So it's all an illusion, all painting is an illusion. It's just the application of light and dark and shadow. That's all we're trying to do here. And trying to be very gentle and subtle with the colour. This is an ancient monument and it's very worn.
Now we can move on for a moment. Maybe we'll make some dark here. The entrance to the tomb. I can pick out a few of these stones using the very tip of the brush and just slightly slightly moving the brush so it gives a little bit of an un uneven sort of edge or texture to the paper. Looking good. It'll carry on drying and changing as we go along. Sometimes I like to add a little bit of pencil. Mix the pencil in with the little bit of pencil in with the paint. And as this is a soft pencil, get a nice blend in there. And still using the very fine brush, a little bit more detail on the brickwork here. A little bit of darker colour here, just to give the illusion of shadow. Maybe there's a little bit of shadow just coming down here. Now, it's time to work onto the pyramid itself. Before I do that, I might just darken in a little bit more on the Sphinx itself. Make some darker shadow here and there. All the time it's changing, changing shape and Okay, I have a very small amount of colour on the tip of my brush and I'll just pick out a little bit of shadow on the top part of the pyramid. Picking it out very gently to give a little bit of feeling of depth and texture. Now. I'm using the brush and I'm gently wiping it side to side. You may be able to hear the silver furrow slightly scratching the paper. Again, this is picking up the surface of the paper and giving a little bit of texture to the pyramid. Practice this though, practice this first on a small piece of paper. It's really quite gentle. You can put a little bit of detail in the distance here. Distant city.
these darker colours are helping to make the Sphinx a little bit, appear to be a little bit closer to the viewer. And I think I have to decide whether this is finished or not. And actually, I think it is finished. If I do any more, it's just going to spoil. I've really enjoyed that. It's an exercise in drawing and an exercise in painting. Let's take the tape off. I would normally allow the tape or the paper to dry overnight. and you get a better result in the morning when the paint is bonded to the paper. I've really enjoyed doing this because it's a little bit of time, isn't it? To forget about our problems and our difficulties in life and to relax and to enjoy the art as a little bit of a relaxation. So there we have the Pyramid and the Sphinx. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Please pass the word on to other people and subscribe. Happy painting.